So, in this video, we're going to look at JavaScript and web pages. Um, we'll look through some of the examples on the W3 schools and maybe some other examples as well. In the CS151 class, we were using JavaScript with Node just to do the basics of programming logic and debugging. In web programming, you'll be using JavaScript in web pages. So, this is what we're going to look at today. First of all, we'll go back to the beginning of uh, the JavaScript introduction, just a few examples on the W3 schools. So we'll look at a few of these to see what's going on. Okay, so in this one, the click me button, when you click it, so we run it to reload, click me button, that changes there. So anything in the that happens when you click something in the web page and something changes, it's probably JavaScript. Here we see that button is just an HTML tag. So this is all HTML except for this part here. So this part here is the part that actually changes the text. The on click is an attribute of the button that is JavaScript code that will run when the button is clicked. So we have um, a special thing called document. This is JavaScript code. So there's a special thing called document um, get element by ID gets the um, HTML element that has the demo ID, and we see here that's that paragraph. Everything that every HTML element that you get like this in JavaScript has a field called inner HTML, and you can set that to a string. This is a string here. Okay, so the key takeaways there's an on click attribute for each. Um, HTML element that you can set. There is uh, something called document.getElementById that you can use to get a particular HTML element. And then you would put that on the element by using the ID attribute. Let's see how we're doing in terms of our notes. Um, so I'll say here quick start. Um, on click attribute of HTML tag, put JavaScript code in quotes for the on click. Um, use ID attribute on some other HTML tag in the on click code. Use document .get element by ID. Um, we'll just put here some ID dot inner HTML equals some string. Okay, so that's your quick start that you could do, and we could try to change this a little bit here. So inside of the paragraph, we could have an on click there as well, and I could say document dot get. So document dot get element by ID demo dot inner HTML equals what something else by so there you see that we can have an on click on anything it's typical to put it on a button because that's what people expect but you could put it on a paragraph or a heading or the body itself. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, that's the same. Um, let's look at this example here with the light bulb. So here we can see that um, we can turn the light bulb on and off and that's these two buttons. Looking at the HTML code over here we do have two button tags. There's a button, there's an image tag, and there's a button. And then we want to look at the on-click attribute of the uh, the two buttons. So the left button you have document .get element by ID with my image. So there has to be a tag with my image as the ID. That's right here. And we have .src. So we can change this src as a normal attribute in the image. 
and we can change that in JavaScript. If we get the element like this, then we can change also the src attribute. So we'll put here a few um, steps that we can use with uh, document.getElementById some id and also set other attributes of the element. So src of image and there will be others. So we see here that here this is a picture with the bulb on and then this is one with the bulb off and those are just pictures that are sitting in the in the same directory as the JavaScript page. So there's the image on its own, there's on, and whatever's well, off, and there's on. Um, if you look at the code here, if we look at the code here in the on click, this is JavaScript code. If we need to put something in quotes inside the JavaScript code, like this here, get element by ID expects a string. So we have single quotes there, and the on-click stuff itself is inside of double quotes. So we can put single quotes if our outside quotes are double. If I put double quotes here, then that would be a problem because when it's the HTML is being read, then the on-click code it thinks is ending here because it's a single string. So if you need to have strings inside of the on-click code, you'd use different. You could either start with single quotes out here and then head double inside or the other way. Okay, let's look at see what they have. So here we have the style. So we can change the style, the CSS style, and use camel case for properties. We'll see what that means just right over here. So let's take a look. So when I click the button, what happened was here. So we get the element, then we can get the style, and then font size. So in CSS, you would normally have put um, So we might have put um, P and then font size maybe 10 picks or something like that. So you do the dashes in between the terms, so they're small. And um, when you're doing this in JavaScript, a dash isn't a good, a dash means minus, right, in programming. So here, anytime you have an attribute that's like this, you use uppercase letters. So I could also do, um, let's say that I click on the paragraph here. I'll just copy and paste this. And instead of font size, maybe I'll do font family is um, monospace. See if that works. All right now if I click here, now it's monospace. All right, where the font family that would would have been set like this. Um, maybe I want to do the background color. So that would normally be with a dash in between, and let's make it red. Go ahead and run it. There, it's red. Okay. Um, so something uh, special property here, let's say uh, HTML element properties commonly used, display none, hide something, so we'll see this, and that hides it, and so sometimes you'll have a button to click to hide something, or sometimes it may be hidden initially. So if I say display equals none, let's see style, that's in the style. Um, display none. And then I could say here display equals 
don't remember. Let's try it. Okay, so I ran it. It's not displaying, and it's still not displaying. Uh, let's see. Okay, block. There, they had it right there. So we'll do display block. Run. Now it's not displaying, and then it appeared. Okay, so this is under the category of CSS properties. So display none, and there are other choices for that. Um, if you want to see what's going on, remember to look at inspect element. <clears throat> so we can look here. There's display block. If I want to see what other choices are there, um, they'll often pop up and you can search online but okay so those are some options that the browser thinks um, we can also see here in the inspect element that there's an EV mark that means there's an event on this button um, if I put if I put something here then um, I should see I should see a uh, little EV mark on there as well. So there's a little EV mark on that paragraph that's currently not displaying. Okay, so I'll say remember to use inspect element for looking at CSS, seeing which HTML elements have um, events attached and looking for JavaScript errors in the console. Okay, so if I over here I have uh, code here on click equals hello. So if you try to run this as JavaScript, it's going to think that hello is supposed to be the name of a variable or something. Um, that may be a problem. So there it's showing. Now if I click on it, it's going to try and run hello if there's going to be an error, then that would show up over here. Let's ignore these messages, but see what happens if I click on this. So there's an error. That's a JavaScript error in the web page. You would see it here on the console, which you can get to various ways, but one way is inspect element and then look at the console. All right, that's it for that part. Um, the other um, introductory stuff to look at is this events part of the JavaScript tutorial. So we can look at some of the examples they have here. So here when they click the button, the code on the on click, so the code with the on click uses the um, inner HTML and then the date function. So date is a built-in function that the web browser knows, <coughs> capital D with parenthesis, that's fine. And then here we see <coughs> where they're putting, so here we have the HTML, the body, here's a paragraph, here's a button. In the code, they put a function that we will define then in the script. So this is normally the way you will see things in JavaScript, that the onClick function will be just a function that gets run that then we defined in the script. So that's the general form. Put that in here. Um, put your JavaScript functions in script and then set on click to be the name of that function with the parenthesis because you're calling the function the script can go in the body after <coughs> the HTML tag or in the head. Okay, so we can have it here like they do in the body, or you could have had up here head, head, and then um, the script tag up here. This should work just the same. Okay, and then we could have much more um, interesting, complicated, whatever, JavaScript up here. 
So we know how to do loops. We could say for var i equals zero, i is less than 10 i plus plus. Okay, so then what would this do? Uh, probably the same, um, but then let's do this. Var s equals date, and then So s is a string, and then we would say s plus equals uh, br, because this is going to be HTML, plus a date. Just add something else, or we'll do i. Okay, so here we have, we're building up a string by we started with the date, and then 0 up to, let's go up to 10. We have a line break, that's HTML. And then the integer. Okay, so we get a arbitrary HTML or JavaScript in here. You use your knowledge of how loops work, um, data types, and all that kind of stuff. And then the output that you're going to need to generate is generally HTML. So if I look at the if I look at that paragraph now. This is the HTML that was generated, the date, the BR, and all of this. That was by my JavaScript code, which is cool. Okay, let's see. So these are some other events that we could try out. We had on click. Um, that's a common one. There are lots of ons. So you could look through here. Generally, anything that happens on a web page, there's a potential that there's an on event for it. So you can go on key presses as well. There's lots. OK. Let's go to examples. So these are going to be some examples. Let's see. Yeah, let's move that up. That's probably the next one. Okay. So let's just look through some of these examples. This is one we already looked at. Okay. This is also another one we already looked at. So this is just a good. Um, Right. Showing and hiding. We also, let's see, we did the showing or the hiding. And there's the showing. All right, so those are all things that we did. Um, this is showing here that we can put the script, we can put the script in the head. This is where the script is in the head, and then the on click is a function. We can put the script in the body and then the on click is a function. We could have actually put this um, right we could have put this code right here into the on click as it is but it's generally much easier to read and debug if you put the function there and then the function inside the script. And then the other way is we could have the script here that comes from its own file. And this is the recommended the recommended way to do things is that your HTML just has the HTML, your style is in an external style sheet, your JavaScript is in an external JavaScript file. So I know that in this JavaScript file will be the function, my function. So then you have three files basically that you're working with, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Um, let's look at a few more of these examples. So this one here, the script, if the script is in the body and there's no function, then it just runs. So I could put here um, anything I want. Let's say five up to five and then I could write 
So if I do document.write, then this will actually write it into the HTML as it loads the page. So I could do here um, i plus j equals i plus j and then br because I'm doing HTML. Uh, let's see, put a plus there. So I could do that. I could make it into a table. Um, so I could put table here. And then inside of the script, then maybe I want to make a new row here. So document dot write uh, tr for table row document dot write slash tr for end of table row and then in here I would put a td and an end td rather than having the br So there's a table, and if I wanted to have a border on it, I could. If I wanted to make this look like an addition table, I could. Um, let's look at the source. So somewhere inside of here, this is all stuff with the W3 schools, but somewhere I should have 0 plus 0. That's not the way it looks. Okay, so let's look at the spec element. So here is the table that I outputted with the rows. Okay, so there it's displaying nicely in the inspector. If you were doing this just in a standalone page, let's actually do that. So I'll copy paste this over here. We'll do uh, JavaScript web. Um, table.html and then go and see what that looks like okay so there's displaying now let's look at the source Okay, so the source is just showing the, it looks like I have a mismatched script tag. Okay, so the source is just showing what, um, right, what the actual code was. That's fine. All right. So that's what we had over here see our other examples. Okay, this is another example with the inner HTML. That's fine. Um, the console.log that we used in Node works as well um, with web pages and then it displays on the console log. So why don't I do here if I'm debugging a program, I might console.log i. Okay, so let's go back and look at this. So the i uh, would have printed, but it would have printed in the log in the console. So here it is, um, 0, 1, 2, 3. If I reset the page, then it resets this uh, printing. So if I take this console log out by putting uh, comments there, it doesn't print. If I had some syntax error here, let's say I had something like that. So what do you think will happen in terms of debugging? So 
the order of operations is this whole file gets sent to the web browser. The web browser looks at the HTML, and as the script tags come, if the code is just there ready to run, it'll run it. And when it gets to an error, then that script will be done. It won't run anymore. So what should happen is we have i equals 0, OK, console.log, document.write, OK. We have another for loop. We do a write, a write, a write. And then when it gets to here, the first, the end of the first row, there's a syntax error because this is not something that's defined. Let's see. Okay, so there we see the first row, and we see our print statement here, which was a zero. So we got to there, and then we know we didn't get there a second time. We would have expected to get there a second time, but we didn't. And then we can see the error here. Um, it's on line 20. You can click there, and so there it shows um, Line 20 is the problem. I could go back over and fix it then. So we'll say over here in our quick start, debugging, have console open, run code, use console.log to trace if um, there is a syntax error. You could also use it to trace the values of variables and things like that if, if it's not working out as you expect. Okay, um, let's look at some more um, advanced examples. So the, there's examples, here are some things that you could read, basically you just could keep going through the W3Schools um, tutorial or find another one. Um, this one you've already been looking at, so it's reasonable. Let's just look at a few other examples. So these are some that have been done in, um, I'll look at a few that have been done in class. Um, so this one here is JavaScript. First give a demonstration. This is supposed to be putting a queen. So we're trying to put a queen on each space and see how many we can get that are not attacking each other. So this is, this is um, blocking out once I put a queen here, if I put another queen, say here, they would be attacking each other. So in this puzzle, that's not allowed. Um, so I could do so there's a way to get uh, seven. And this is all in JavaScript. So if I want to look at something, I should open the console. And so reload the page. There's no JavaScript errors, which is good. Right, and there was a way to get uh, there's one solution to the puzzle. There's eight. Um, okay, so the basic way this is this code works, and we can look at the source code either here, right, in the browser. If you have an account on the CS server, you can actually browse to it. So it's in this directory in my public underscore HTML. So I'll go jkinney public underscore HTML, and then that stuff, and this is the actual file. Here I could play around with it and make some changes. Um, so the actual code is not that long. Where it starts is where we start loading the body. Well, we get to the script tag, and there's a function. There's a function. There's a function. So when it loads, when it gets to this point of loading the page, those are just functions that are available. We get to the body. There's some text, there's a table, and a table, and then we have a script here, and this is not declaring a function, so this will run when the page loads. And what do we see? There's a for loop that happens eight times. There's uh, eight there, so if I wanted to change this to be 10 by 10, maybe I would just have to change that 
that dim to 10 and reload. There it is. Okay, so we have a for loop that goes eight times. It writes a row, and we have a for loop that goes eight times, and it's going to write a um, a TD table element. There's going to be some stuff in on click, on double click. So it's doing the same thing for on click or double click. So with the on click, it's doing something to um, change the color on these. And and that's that's it. So let's go ahead and inspect. Why don't we inspect the first one here and see what it looks like? Okay, so after it outputs the HTML, this is what it output. So there's an ID. Each button has a different ID. So the first one is uh, button 00. The second one is button 01. Those are strings that come from... So here we have ID equals button underscore row underscore column. Okay, so that's just JavaScript putting together this this string that's the ID, so they all have different IDs. Okay, so that's the ID. Then um, the style, the CSS class, for some of the, half of them is square black and half of them is square white. Okay, and that is controlled by row plus column is even or odd. So if it's even, it's black. So we go black, white, black, white, black, white, etc. They just get different classes and that that is up in the style. So we have dot square black and dot square white. They all get this and then the white gets a different background color. The black and the white get different background colors and different colors here. Okay, that's the class, and then we have on click and on double click. Um, there's a function called toggle queen this. This is a keyword um, in JavaScript that when an event runs, this is going to send in um, an object that is the, the one that got clicked. So let's go look at the toggle queen function. So here's toggle queen, and the parameter there could be called whatever we want. I called it me. So this me will be a JavaScript object that is um, the HTML element that was clicked. Okay, so here if the inner HTML is Q, then it changes to empty. So if it was already clicked, then we change it to empty. If it wasn't Q, that means it was empty. We're going to change it to Q. And then we parse out the row and the column. So with the way that I have these IDs, they're all button underscore this underscore this. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's index 7. That's index 9 as long as it's only a single digit. So here we have index 7 in the me.id and index 9 in the me.id. So that gets the row and the column as numbers. Then this is attacked function gets called with row and column. So if so, this is the case where we're calling. So if I'm clicking here, nothing's changing, and this is where that's checked. So if this return happens, your JavaScript says the function stops, and if it stops here then we haven't changed it to Q. All right, so that function must be checking to see whether there's anything in the same row, column, or diagonal. I'm not going to look at that. You can look at it. If we do get to the Q, then we change it. So it could be that we either took the Q away or we added the Q, and then the shade attacked is going to go and update the colors on all of these. So the shade attacked actually looks through um, every every position.
So it goes through and recalculates the entire board. So this, yeah, you can look at that on your own. All right, so here's, here's one example. Uh, it should have stayed there. Okay, so let's go back to there. Uh, let's see what was coming from curiosities. Let's look at one more. Okay, so this one is uh, Pong. And P for pause, I think it was, okay, click for pause. So this one shows you a graphical display. So there's going to be something that sets up this drawing, and then there's going to be a timer that moves the ball and moves, this is the computer player, so that's just going to move. And then there's going to be something that listens for clicks. Um, there was something that said uh, music in here, but that's not uh, working. All right, so we could look at this one. Okay, this was in the same same course. So we could look here at what happens. Um, so when we let's take a look at the page source. Okay, so when the when the page loads. This stuff here is not inside of a function, so this actually runs, sets up some variables for where things are going to be. There's a function, there's a function, some more functions, some more functions. So, so far, some variables have been set up, and then you get to onload for the body. So that's another on thing that you can use. So when the page is loaded, draw world happens, initialize mouse scroll happens, and when keys are pressed, there's the handle keys, which that's the uh, P for pause, but that's not working. And if we actually look at the console, we'll see there was a there was a, an error with that. So that it was working in a previous version of JavaScript and not in whatever the one is now. Okay, and then we see the inside the the body. There's some text and then there is a canvas. So this is the thing that's giving us a graphical display. So the canvas has an ID, width and height, and there's a on click and on move. So the on move is what's moving the paddle and the on click is what's pausing. Okay, the first thing that happens with the canvas is this draw world, so we can go and look at what that looks like. Here's the draw world. Um, so this is kind of, these are functions that are defined for doing 2D graphics. So this C is get, get document by ID, that's the canvas. There must be, the canvas had ID, get canvas, or game canvas. And then if it's a canvas tag, then there's this thing that we can do, um, get context 2D that we save as a variable. And then there's functions for drawing. So this clears, clears the canvas, sets the drawing to be dark blue, draws a rectangle with some coordinates, draws another rectangle, and then there's more functions for drawing. But the, so this part here is always always the same where you get the drawing context. That's the basic structure anyway. And if you look at, um, I put a link here, graphics. This is in the JavaScript currently. It is under more and learn graphics. So there's some other stuff here and there's the canvas. So there's examples, um, as usual, on the on the W3 schools that you can see. Um, so here's a body. There's a canvas. That's so it's just set up. That's it. There's the canvas, and it has a border. Um, let's go to the drawing. Let's go to the end here. Okay, so this was the full example. 
Um, so here's a canvas. There's a script that runs. So this is the part where so we get the get the element, get the drawing context, set the fill style, and then draw a rectangle from 0, 0 to 150, 75. And the way the coordinates work here is this point is 0, 0, and then the width goes this way, and the height goes this way. So this is, uh, well, that's 150 wide and 75 tall. And they have descriptions here. Um, so you want to, want to read through that about how these functions work. Um, okay, so then we want to look at the mouse move and the mouse click to see what's happening there. Uh, let's go back over here. Right, and we saw that those were hooked in with the canvas. So we have the mouse move is move paddle and the on click is start stop. Let's look at the move paddle function. Here's the move paddle function. So we have the game canvas and we have a so this gives us the coordinates of the game canvas and then this pad x variable is changed so that it's set to the so this e comes in from move paddle event so that's going to be the canvas and move paddle so that it happens to have a um, a property called client x in there. Okay, so this is just a formula that calculates the the position of the pad. So then this pad x must be used somewhere else wherever it's drawing the um, the paddle. So this, if we looked through, we would see this pad x gets used here, and that's where this gets drawn. So you can see the black fill style and it draws a rectangle depending on the pad X and the pad Y and the pad Y is always the same but the pad X changes based on the mouse. Now how does the ball move? That's based on a timer. So somewhere there's going to be some kind of timer and that is right here. So there's something called set timeout that can be used that will say do this function after this many milliseconds. So this function here changes the X position of the of the ball. So pause X is the ball, pad X is my paddle. So there's the X position changing and then eventually there's the Y position changing and that's just some calculations um, that says Whichever direction it's going, it moves some amount X and some amount Y. It's either going left or right, up or, up or down. And that is kept tracked with some other variables. Um, won't go into the details. Um, adjusting the speed. I don't remember whether we actually had that hooked in. Okay, so I'll leave that like that. Um, so what you would want to do is you could look through some of these, uh, some of these things, and then there are some other examples um, down here. So canvas clock and an HTML game. Um, where is the finished code? So here's the finished code for a clock. So they have the code over here showing you how to draw the clock, where the numbers go, and having this second hand tick by. There's going to be a timer again. And you can go through step by step to see the different parts. So here's the first part, just drawing a circle. And then they're going to draw the face, the numbers, the hands, so that's setting up all the drawing. And then 
the timer. Okay, so that's one example. Then they have a little game don't remember uh, that's a uh, little box going around okay so here we have, I'm doing the left and right keys to rotate and uh, up and down keys to go forward and back. So this would be a basic kind of 2D first person game where you have a view of the world and okay, so it actually let me go off the world or off the canvas. Okay, and again you could go through step by step to see how this works and then maybe make some changes. Um, yeah, that's plenty. So you have more, um, you could go through their whole JavaScript um, tutorial again, going through um, with things in the web pages. So you would start here, and then, so when you get to a particular topic, math, um, these are these are in the browser. So you can now go ahead and run things in the browser and you should know how you know, JavaScript works in terms of loops and data types and all this stuff and now the only difference is you're going into the inner HTML or some other parts of the of the page. Have fun.